In 2000, what, one of the dynamics to remember is that the, the Democrats, we knew by polling in the middle of the summer that Democrats were going to have a low turnout, even aside from the structural issues, because they were disappointed in the performance of the president. In 2010, um, uh, or in 2012, we may have Republicans who are disappointed in the performance of the Republican legislature and the Republicans in the... If you don't see change happen quickly enough, it's easy to become dispirited. And if change happens too quickly, then you mobilize and galvanize the other side. So I think we're going to have far more competitive elections in 2012 than most of us imagine uh, as a result of, after looking at this election. However, <laughs> this legislature has some really obviously difficult things in front of it. Now, Governor Perry, to his credit, ran a campaign on three issues. He ran it on jobs, he ran it on border security, and he ran it on states' rights. Uh, six months ago, these were the issues. And I have to tell you, my hat is off to Governor Perry because I have never seen a 25-year incumbent become the outsider in an election. <laughs> and I will tell you, one other, that reminds me of one other statistic. I have never, if you do national polling and to a lesser degree, Texas polling, uh, you'll find that uh, Democrats have about a 35% approval rating. Republicans have about a 25% approval rating. I've never seen the party with the lower approval rating do so well in an election, which takes me back to the first point, which is that, that it's the independents that decide these elections, and only 55% of the country approve of either Democrats or Republicans. It's that 45% that refuse to call themselves Democrat or Republican that decide elections. And uh, I come from Austin, which means I have allergies, which means I take antihistamines, which means I drink a lot. <laughs> um, Democrats uh, had a disaster. As a matter of fact, um, while I think they are going to come back pretty strongly in the middle of this next decade, um, uh, needless to say, we have almost a two-thirds majority in the Texas House of Representatives. We have almost a two-thirds majority in, uh, in the Texas Senate. Of course, all of our statewide office holders are Republican. Um, um, uh, the United States Congress is Republican. Now, the issue is not to oppose, but to propose. We have to put an agenda on the table. And I think the voters, um, the Tea Party is about cutting the budget, not about raising taxes. Um, but this is, we've got some very daunting circumstances ahead of us. Um, and I don't think the public yet understands the order of magnitude of what the kind of budget cutting we're, we're um, uh, looking at. Governor Perry refused to engage on that issue to give any guidance. And actually, that was not improper because the governor has very little say so about what the budget looks like. It's the House and Senate chairman that build the legislative bills, try and thread the needle, and the only mission they've got is to get 76 votes on the House side and to get, um, uh, you've got to have 21 to bring a bill to the floor. You've got to have two-thirds to bring a bill to the floor in the Texas Senate. Uh, that's the only mission. That's the only criteria. And governors can offer opinions and, and, and propose their budgets. But this is sausage making at its best, and the only mission is to find 76 votes. The House has a very interesting circumstance going forward. We're obviously in the middle of a speaker's race, and um, I, if I had to bet today, uh, I would bet that Joe Strauss remains the speaker. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad thing. Uh, Strauss was hired uh, post Craddock. He was hired by the legislature not to cast a shadow. He was hired to be a fair broker of the rules. Now, if the Republicans can't get their agenda passed with 99 votes and a fair broker at the top, then they have a problem, and it is a Joe Strauss. Um, uh, it's, it's their own internal problem, and we have already seen the Republicans begin the circular firing squad. Um, um, I don't know how many of you are seeing the emails that are flying around. Most of these are social conservative organizations that are attacking Strauss, uh, mostly for incorrect, uh, uh, they're misstating facts, uh, or simply flat out lying, uh, which always strikes me as interesting coming from organizations that have uh, uh, a religious base, but it is politics, and as we all know, truth is always the first casualty in politics. Um, 
but having said that, we have essentially one in four dollars in the state budget. It, we, uh, we, have, we have lost one in four dollars in our state budget. This state has close to a million new people since 2006, yet our revenues do not exceed, probably will not exceed the revenues we had in 2006. Uh, our sales tax, we've had a couple of good months of sales tax, but that's getting us back to 2006 numbers. Um, what's going to happen if the Republicans follow through on what they've said they're going to do is we're going to probably see well over 100,000, maybe 150,000 public employees laid off. Uh, not all those are going to be state employees, but when they cut the budgets to the schools, when they cut the budgets on road construction, when they cut the budget, um, um, we're going to see another wave of unemployment. Um, uh, potentially that's going to roll through Texas and those of you that are merchants, as am I, are going to see a drop in, um, in business and another drop in sales tax. Now, maybe the rest of the economy revives strongly enough, but our problem in terms of losing pub public sector jobs is not unique to Texas. This is all over the country. If you follow the stock market, uh, Cisco yesterday released its earnings and said that they had seen a 45% drop in purchases from uh, the public sector. 45% drop from one of our biggest companies. Um, it, I, I don't know if it's a canary in the coal mine, I am not an economist, uh, but as a businessman, uh, I am certainly not increasing my risk profile in terms of not keeping a bigger inventory, not doing any hiring. I'm very happy that we didn't have to lay anybody off. Uh, we did cut bonuses last year. We may have them back this year, um, but um, but I, I think we are not we are far from out of the woods until we get past this contraction in public sector spending. And having listened to everything that's happened here in, in this conversation, you folks know that you've got a new college, you've got roads that are being built. All of these are contingent on a healthy and robust economy. Williamson County is more blessed than most, but um, I, I think that it's uh, going to be very daunting. We're going to have 30, I think 35 or 36 new members in the Texas House. Most of them pledge to come cut, cut budgets without paying, without increasing taxes. Let me just give you one of the, one simple little uh, connection, and that is Medicaid. Now, most people think Medicaid are for poor folks that don't want to work, et cetera, but 60% of Medicaid dollars go to nursing homes. Um, just to give you how wrenching the kind of argument is that we're going to have, um, we've got, I think, 13 or 14 new state reps from rural Texas, all Republicans. Rural Texas is where the population is aging the fastest. The young people are leaving and you're mostly left with older folks. In 2003, the last time we had a major budget shortfall, we decided to cut money for nursing homes and you know what the argument boiled down to. Um, we used to give a $30 allowance to nursing homes, to folks that were in nursing homes to buy uh, personal uh, uh, sanitary things like, you know, dentures or flaw, uh, uh, denture cleaners or, in this case, um, sanit uh, 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 diapers for the elderly. Um, and we cut it from $30 to $6. And the argument, we spent about two hours uh, in the House Appropriations Bill on the floor wrestling with whether we were going to make that cut. We ultimately didn't make that cut. But, um, this, uh, th there's a very human face to the kind of conversations that are going to be going on. Those 11 or 12 or 13 <coughs> rural Republicans have no clue yet who they represent. And I will say that about any freshman, whether it's a Democratic freshman or a Republican freshman. They always come into the legislature thinking they represent, with, well, I should make an exception, your new state rep, Larry Gonzalez, has had some experience in the legislature, so he's coming in with his eyes wide open. But most, if you don't have any experience in the legislative process or in government, you think you represent an ideology. Uh, and it takes two, maybe three sessions before you realize you represent school districts, road districts, hospital districts, water infrastructure issues, um, which forget whether you're Democrat or Republican, water wars in the legislature are not pretty. Uh, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with partisan affiliation. Um, it takes two or three sessions to realize who you really represent, major employers, small business. Um, and if you listen to talk radio or Fox or MSNBC, you think this concept of governing is actually fairly simple. 
it is very nuanced and threading the new needle to be able to represent all the constituencies that you represent, whether it's a Republican district or a Democratic district, is, um, is very difficult. And you folks are, uh, even in a prosperous, relatively prosperous county like Williamson County, you're going to discover that there's going to be some cuts that, that are going to have impacts that nobody predicted that are going to affect your businesses and your lives.